Hello and welcome to My Bolty UV. I am Jim and we're going from point A to point B. Climb in. Let's go. Today we're going to talk a little bit about charging costs, the reality of DC fast charging, who pays, who built the stations, where did the money come from for all these stations to be built, why does it cost so much, is it a scam or a ripoff, which in a lot of ways it is. We'll talk about that in a little bit of detail. Let's face it, DC fast charging your car is not cheap. It costs all much, almost as much to fill up your EV as it does to fill up an ICE vehicle when you're using a DC fast charge dispenser. But there are a few things you should know and today we're going to look at one, who paid for these DC fast charge units. Two, what the cost actually is. And I will explain the two charging sessions that I had recently at Electrify America and EVGO. And then we'll take a closer look at the cost of charging from home. Okay, who pays or has paid for the majority of the DC fast charge infrastructure that we see today? Well, that answer is a bit complex. First, you have a company like Tesla. Until recently, that was 100% private investment on the part of Tesla. But for them to access the billions of taxpayer dollars that's being invested in the DC fast charge networks nationwide, Tesla has agreed to open their networks to other vehicles. And they're currently testing that out in New York and California. And most recently, Ford and GM have joined Tesla and they're going to put the NACS charger receptacles in their cars starting next year. They also have several dispensers, again, that are equipped for CCS chargers in New York and California. And I'm sure that's going to expand over the course of the next few months. Then we have Electrify America. I will not go into much detail here, but EA exists because of the infamous dieselgate problems that VW had back in the early 2000s. The result is that they were fined over $18 billion by the U.S. government. But the government has allowed Volkswagen to use $2 billion and maybe a little bit more now of that money to create what we know as Electrify America. So in reality, we, the taxpayer, have paid for these EA stations, the ones you see dotted across the country. And the sad thing is, while VW gets to run the company, they get all the proceeds, even though we've paid for it. Additionally, most states have alternative fuel programs that are paying for various EV charging companies like EVGO and Blink and a few of the others to build quite a few of the DC fast charge systems that we're seeing prop up all over the, the nation. Here in Florida, there are four programs. One takes advantage of the Department of Transportation on National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Planning Program. Now that's a mouthful. The plan is established according to the program requirements and they pass those funds on to private entities so they can build these EV charging stations. There are also three other Florida statutes that allow local governments to offer funding to property owners to help them finance EV charging stations. And there's one for schools, there's one for biodiesel, and also additionally two local cities, Tampa and Jacksonville I know of, have EV incentive programs to help companies build EV charging stations. There are literally hundreds of incentive programs here in the USA that help incentivize, incentivize business owners to build DC fast charge systems on their property. So just to summarize this a little bit, Tesla built most of their own, but they're now taking incentives from the federal government to expand their network. Then there's Electrify America, which is a result of the diesel gate thing. And finally, there are a lot of incentives for businesses to build DC fast charge and even level two charging stations on their property. So there's a lot of incentivization going on to get these uh, uh, charging stations built nationwide. Okay, let's talk about DC fast charging costs. I did the work and the math, so you don't have to. The first one we're going to talk about here is the cost of DC fast charging here in Florida which is by the kilowatt hour and not by the minute. And that varies from state to state based on the requirements and the laws of that state. So it could be by the minute in your state and by the kilowatt hour in the next state. 
I used two brands of DC fast chargers here in the local area. One was Electrify America and the other was EVGO. The video you're seeing now is just a, a couple of shots that I took of the EA charger that is near downtown Orlando. It's located at 8200 Vineland Avenue in Orlando. Keep in mind that I'm a Pass Plus holder. It costs me four bucks a month and I get the lowest rate. The rate here was 36 cent per kilowatt hour, but after taxes, it was almost 39 cent per kilowatt hour. And we'll go into that in a little more detail just shortly. And the second set of videos that we're gonna go through is from the EVGO charger that's an older 50 kilowatt unit here in Sanford, Florida. It is located at 1401 WP Ball Boulevard in Sanford. And I'm an EVGO Plus holder here. It costs me about a dollar a month. And the rates I get are all 8% off the standard. EVGO uses a time of day rate plan and I use the early bird uh, rates which were from midnight to 8 a.m. for the lowest rates, and that's 42 cent per kilowatt hour before tax, and after taxes, it's about 45 cent per kilowatt hour. So right off the bat, Electrify America is about six percent, six cent cheaper per kilowatt hour all day long than the best rate that EVGO offers. But neither one of these rates are what I would consider a deal. So let's look at the video that I did of the EVGO charging session and we'll talk about that in a little bit and compare it to charging at home. Okay, we're coming into our destination. This is a Target. This is Sanford. And this is an EVGO station that we're going to. We'll take you through the EVGO station real quick before we get started. This session is going to be very easy to start and I will take you through it step by step. This particular EVGO charger has a Chatamo, a Tesla, and a CCS charger which is what I'm going to be using this morning. Take it out of the holster. Walk it over to the car. Plug it in. That's it. I'm going to come back over here and press start. And that's it. That's all I've got to do. Payment has been authorized. This is a plug and go. And within just a few minutes, I'll get a notification on my uh, car that the charge has started. It's going through preparation right now it says preparing to charge setting up communications with your vehicle you just heard it beep and I am now charging that all within about 30 seconds let's see what kind of speeds I'm gonna get I'm already up to 44 kilowatts 20 seconds into the charge Okay, I'm sitting back in the car now, just a few seconds later. While I'm still pulling 44 kilowatts off of the charger, uh, I'm only getting 43 watt kilowatts here in the car because I've got the AC on. I'm gonna turn this off in just a few minutes. Again, we started out with 32% state of charge. Tracking my energy, we're up to 34% already. And that's just two minutes in. We'll see what happens here in the next few minutes. I'm a few minutes into the charge session. Still hanging around 44, 45 kilowatt hours. I'm listening to the charger and it's starting to ramp up pretty good. And I'm already up to 98 miles of range, so I'm putting on range pretty quick for 32 to 40% already. So we are about 12 minutes into the session. Arrival state of charge, 32%. As you can see, we're already up to 46%. This is a 50 kilowatt charger. My maximum charging speed so far has been 46 kilowatt hours. And uh, that's about as good as I'll probably get off of this particular charger. 
we arrived with 82 miles and we're now at 115 miles at 12 minutes into the session. So just a, a little past 20 minutes into the charge, I'm still charging at about 46 kilowatt hours, 45 shown on the vehicle because I have it turned on. I've gone from 82 to 140 miles. So I've added 30 miles in roughly 20 minutes. And the session is still holding steady at about 45 kilowatt hours. Over on the Chevrolet app, it's showing that I now have 58% charge and uh, 142 miles of range. So range is still being added at the maximum speed of this EVgo charger. We'll see what happens at 60%. So now we're at 60% and we're starting to get that taper. It's dropped off to 39 to 40 kilowatt hours. Range is up to 150 miles. And Chevrolet is reporting 61% uh, state of charge. Uh, I'll probably be unplugging here in just about five minutes. Uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm about one minute away from unplugging. I'm at 160 miles and we've tapered off now to 36 kilowatts of charging power. And in about uh, 60 seconds, I'm gonna unplug. We've gone from 32 to 65% and we're up to 160 miles of range. I'll let you know the final numbers when my 30 minute session is up. I'm gonna be stopping the session just in just about one second. So we're stopping the session right now. 65% state of charge, 30 minutes elapsed time, 22.037 kilowatt hours added. Okay, 163 miles of range. 66% state of charge is what my car is reporting. So the real savings come when you start charging at home. The real cost savings are the difference between a DC fast charge at almost 50 cent per kilowatt hour and what you're going to get at home, which can be anywhere from 9 to 15 cent per kilowatt hour. At the EA charging station, I added about 21 kilowatt hours and was charged for 21, and the cost was $8.12. The EVgo charging station, I added about 22 kilowatt hours and was billed for 22, and the total cost was $9.91. But when you look at the cost comparison table, the Electrify America cost savings would have been $5.28 for that session. But for the home compared to EV Go charging session, it would have been $6.93. So those two charging stations, I paid $12.21 premium to add 43 kilowatt hours to my vehicle. And that's a little bit ridiculous in my opinion. So let's summarize this. The fact is most CCS fast charging stations are funded by Dieselgate and other state incentives. The current Tesla network is mostly private. DC fast charge is not much less expensive than gasoline and that's a sad state. And finally, it is cheaper much cheaper to charge at home than at a DC fast charge station, which is why I think they should be limited to your road trips and nothing else. So for coming soon, I'm still looking into the salvaging totaled battery electric vehicles opportunities, still in the fact gathering stage. And I'm also gonna talk about the Tesla adapters that are coming for GM and Ford and possibly other vehicles. And will you be able to use that Tesla adapter interchangeably with other vehicles from GM and Ford? Who knows? We'll find out more about that as I do some more research. Please subscribe, share, comment, and like, and ring the notification bell if you want to know when I'm uploading something new. Also remember to treat everyone with kindness, put a smile on your face, help someone today, and pay it forward when someone does the same for you. Thank you for stopping by. I'll see you soon or somewhere along that route from point A to point B. Until then, this is Jim signing off. See you soon.